Subaru is introducing its mild hybrid technology to European customers at the Geneva Motor Show with the new Forester e-Boxer, which takes the place of the Axe diesel variant of the previous generation. Subaru's e-Boxer mild hybrid technology pairs the company's 2.0-liter flat-four petrol engine with a small electric motor mounted in the transmission, a re-engineered version of Subaru's Linartronic CVT unit. The petrol engine produces 148 horsepower and 143 pounds FT, with the electric motor adding an extra 16 horsepower and 48 pounds FT of torque. Features like the permanent four-wheel drive system remain unchanged. The new mild hybrid Subaru Forester can be driven under electric power alone very briefly and at low speeds. The battery pack is mounted on the rear axle, giving the Forester e-Boxer a lower center of gravity and better weight distribution than its petrol counterpart. Subaru hasn't announced yet any official fuel economy figures, including CO2 emissions. The new fifth-generation Forester is slightly and wider than its predecessor, offering bigger interior space and a more practical boot. The interior is made by better quality materials and also claims to be quieter too. The new mild hybrid e-boxer powertrain is also going to be offered in the XP, or cross track depending where you live. Subaru will launch the new Forester e-boxer alongside the XV e-boxer in Europe by the fall of this year. The next chapter in Subaru's long line of Viziv concept cars is this, the Adrenaline. But rather than previewing a totally new model, even if it does look like a dead ringer for a next-generation cross track Subaru says the Adrenaline instead shows the company's new design language, dubbed Boulder. The company said in a statement at the Geneva Motor Show that, through the new Boulder design philosophy, Subaru aims to broaden the brand's outlook, define the characteristics of Subaru vehicles more prominently and create more enjoyment for all passengers. It's definitely a Subaru alright, definitely not what we'd call pretty, but purposeful and kind of rugged cute. The grey cladding on the front fender seems to follow the headlight design in a weird way, but we dig the rounded off-road. Subaru says the Adrenaline's roof design actually uses parts that reinforce the body structure, and that overall, the styling is meant to express the toughness and agility of this concept car. Because this is a design-focused concept, Subaru doesn't have any information about what kind of powertrain might be under the hood, and it's not apparent that the car has an interior either. Still. Look for design elements from this concept to show up on future Subarus. It may sound hard to believe, but the current Nissan Frontier has been on sale since 2004. Despite various updates along the way, the truck's basics have remained unchanged and yet it still remains the top seller for Nissan. Perhaps the reason why is its simplicity, ideal dimensions, and overall ruggedness. But all good things must come to an end and the start of a new beginning. According to The Drive, the vice president of Nissan North America, Fred de Perez, has confirmed that development of a new frontier is well underway. Furthermore, we won't be disappointed with it. The news doesn't come as much of a surprise, but it's good to hear someone at Nissan has officially gone on record to confirm what we've long suspected. Unfortunately, De Perez could not provide a precise timeline as to when the new frontier will arrive, but chances are it'll be sooner rather than later. It's also unknown whether the new truck will share a platform with the next generation Navarro, which is sold in many overseas markets. The Navarro's platform also serves as the basis for the Mercedes-Benz X-Class. The arrival of the reborn Ford Ranger and recently updated Toyota Tacoma are just two reasons why. 
The resurgence of the mid-sized truck segment in the U.S. means there's money to be made because not every truck buyer needs or wants a full-size truck like a Titan or F-150. De Perez emphasized, Frontier is a key component of our truck strategy. Another reason for the Frontier's continued existence is for owners to, eventually, upgrade to a more expensive Titan or simply to remain a Nissan customer. Nissan is also feeling confident about the Frontier in part due to 2018 sales. A total of 79,646 Frontiers were sold in the U.S. last year, an increase of 7.1% from the year prior. It also outsold the Versa, Pathfinder, Maxima, Armada, Leaf, and 370Z. It even outsold the much newer Titan by almost 30,000 units. Not bad at all for a truck that's 15 years old. What's in store for Subaru customers in the near future? Subaru is going electric and it all starts in Europe where Subaru Corporation will unveil two new all-wheel drive electrified models to show the world what customers can expect from the Japanese automaker soon. Subaru Europe announced the two new electrified models will be unveiled to the public at the 89th Geneva International Motor Show that runs from March 7 to 17. Subaru will use the e-boxer badge on both new models like the Japan Spec Forester and Cross-Strek e-boxer models recently launched in Japan. The new launches will be the Japanese automaker's first electrified cars in the European market and will most likely be two current models in their all-wheel drive lineup. It could be a Levorg Sports Tourer e-boxer hybrid and a new 2020 Forester small SUV hybrid. These are popular models in Europe and it would give the brand traction into the electric car market. Subaru Corporation is also bringing a VIZIV Adrenaline concept to the 89th Geneva International Motor Show. The Japanese automaker calls it the Subaru VIZIV Adrenaline concept and it makes its world debut Tuesday, March 5th. Subaru is mum about what the vehicle is about other than it teased the VIZIV Adrenaline concept two weeks ago ahead of its reveal. From the image released by Subaru, it doesn't have a hood scoop, so it's likely not a performance car. It's possibly a new all-wheel drive hatch with 8.7 inches of ground clearance. It's pictured in a high mountain setting telling us it's all about off-road adventure. Subaru Corporation filed a U.S. trademark patent for use of the name Evoltis back in April 2018. The name could be used on Subaru's new EV set to hit the market sometime in 2021. Is the VIZIV Adrenaline concept a preview of the brand's new EV? The Japanese automaker will also display the latest iteration of the Levorg featuring a redesigned front hood and newly equipped with a 2.0-liter boxer engine. The Subaru VIZIV Adrenaline concept and two new European spec e-boxer all-wheel drive models will be unveiled at the press briefing scheduled for 10.45 a.m. Central European Time, on Tuesday, March 5 at the Subaru booth. Is this a preview of Subaru's new all-electric all-wheel drive model? Stay tuned. Pricing for the Nissan's longer-range electric car, the Leaf Plus with 62 kWh battery and 226 miles real-world range, has been announced by the Japanese car maker in the US. The Nissan Leaf Plus will be available in three trims, the S, the SV and the SL, all with the same 62 kWh battery, increased range and more kick from the improved 160 kW power output from its motor. It's been a long wait for Nissan's answer to calls for a larger battery and better driving range, 
and it cannot be ignored that news of pricing in the U.S. has been released immediately after rival carmaker Tesla's unveiling of the $35,000 base Model 3. The base trim version of the Nissan Leaf Plus will be $36,550, with the SL coming in at $38,510 and the SV at $42,550. Brian Morengo, Director of EV Sales and Marketing, Nissan North America, said in a statement that, with the addition of LEAF Plus, the Nissan LEAF is now available with two battery options and a choice of six trim levels, each featuring the many advanced technologies offered under the banner of Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Nissan have taken pains to ensure that the LEAF Plus, as with the LEAF, is clearly an electric vehicle, from the revised front nose design with its blue highlights and E Plus logo under the charger lid, to the rear badges designating the S Plus, SL Plus or SV Plus trims. All variants will include Nissan's driving technologies including Driver Assistance Tech Pro Pilot Assist and its E Pedal Regenerative Braking System, not unexpected but good to know. They will also receive the standard 8-year-100,000 mile battery warranty including battery loss protection, which provides a limited warranty in the case that the battery capacity drops below 9 out of 10 bars. What the new US pricing will mean for Australian pricing is yet to be seen. It may be worth comparing to the Hyundai Kona Electric which is said to have a starting price of US$36,450 in the USA. But the Nissan Leaf Plus, although offering a much improved range to its predecessor the 2019 40 kWh Leaf, falls short of the range of the Kona Electric which will have 480 km of real-world range. However, it does compare to the range of the base Tesla Model 3, which has 220 miles and is slated for a mid-2019 arrival in Australia, although pricing for this is even more highly speculative than the Kona.